Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my garden. About a month ago, I shot a video about the idea of growing spring blooming bulbs. You know, they add so much to the garden. They're so beautiful and definitely worth it. Well, during that video, I promised that I would shoot a follow-up video discussing how to plant the bulbs themselves. Well, today's the day. I've received my order from johnsheepers.com, all 80 bulbs, <laughs> and I'm going to share with you 10 bulb planting do's and don'ts. The first thing I wanted to do is just to remind you of the bulbs that I ordered. As I mentioned in the other video, I love ordering unusual bulbs. They might still be tulips or daffodils, but unusual varieties that look really cool in the garden. You know, it's really easy to get distracted with other types of gardening projects this time of year. But if you don't get your bulbs in the ground before it freezes, that is definitely a showstopper. If you have deer and or gophers in the area, you need to know that they love tulips. The deer will eat the tulip blossoms, which is awful and the gophers will chew on the bulbs. That is definitely a showstopper as well. So if you do not have a way of protecting them, you do not want to grow tulips. I am able to grow them in my backyard because it's protected by deer fencing, and I also keep an eye out for gopher mounds so that I know if trouble is coming. Now I don't want you to get discouraged because there are quite a few options here, such as Narcissus, Fritillaries, Dutch Iris, Dutch Hyacinths, Grape Hyacinths, Squill, Snowdrops, and Spanish Bluebells. All of these are considered deer and rodent resistant. Now I realize sometimes the animals break the rules, but in theory, those are ones to look for. Some of the bulbs I ordered need to be in full sun, while others will tolerate full sun to part shade. So keep them happy by planting them in the right place. When you're getting ready to plant, be sure to look on the package to see how tall the plants are going to be so you put them in the right place. So for example, I have a rock garden iris here called Harmony it's only going to be four to six inches tall. And that means I want to plant them near the front of a bed so I can admire them. Now, to be honest, if you plant your bulbs in a long straight row, it's going to look dorky, unless you have some very formal landscape where you're trying to make patterns or something like that. But generally speaking, it is a really good idea to plant clumps of the bulbs or even to combine two types of bulbs that would look really pretty together and plant them in groups. When it comes to planting bulbs, the rule of thumb is to plant them two to three times the height of the bulb. So let's say your bulb is two inches tall that means you would plant them between four and six inches deep. The most important thing you need to do is to look at the packaging that your bulbs came in because they should tell you what the planting depth is. If you sprinkle bulb fertilizer into the planting hole and then put the bulb on top of it, you risk burning the root zone of the bulb. It is much better to plant them fill in the holes, and then sprinkle some of the bulb fertilizer onto the soil surface in that area. That will work much better. 
Now, after your bulbs have finished blooming and the flowers have faded, but the leaves are still green, that's when you want to fertilize them again. So let's talk about bulb fertilizer for a moment. You know, all fertilizer packages are going to have three numbers on the label. The first represents nitrogen, the second phosphorus, and the third potassium. That high middle number is what you're looking for. So this is fish bone meal, regular bone meal is awesome. Both of these are organic. There are a lot of packages of bulb fertilizer that are on the market and that is what you're looking for. So again, you're just going to sprinkle it on the soil surface in the area where the bulbs are planted. Okay, I've talked a lot about planting bulbs, so let's actually plant some. And remember how I mentioned about combining bulbs. So I've got two bulbs that I'd really like to put in this area. I have some Tubergen's Gem yellow and red tulips over here. And so I have a tulip that is called Orphanidea flava, and it is a more petite tulip bulb. And then I also have the Narcissus canaliculatus. So you can see the size. Now remember I said the rule is to plant two to three times the height of the bulb. Well look, they have basically the same height, so I'm going to go ahead and plant them at the same depth. And I always like to air more deep than shallower, just because it's so easy to accidentally disturb them with a trowel or a shovel or something. Now if you're thinking our soil looks mighty dry, you would be right, because we've had an extremely dry summer. So I'm hoping we're going to catch up over the winter months. But anyway, so what I want to do is combine them together in this area. And the Narcissus is about six inches tall, so a little more petite than what we're used to. And the tulip is going to be about nine inches tall. So what I want to do is to just take a bit of each, and I'm going to just arrange them in the hole. I'll sort of play with the layout once I figure out how many bulbs I can fit into this hole. I'm really excited about these two varieties because I think they're going to be spectacular. And I try not to make them look totally lined up in a row. I think maybe a combination like that should work out really nicely. These are going to be so pretty. So I've sort of seeded them into the soil at a good depth. Now I'm going to fill the hole back in. And if you've been noticing a lot of road noise in the background, there's a large road that is near ours and they are resurfacing it. And unfortunately, our road is the only other alternative to go. So we're getting so many cars, it's really getting annoying, but that's the way it goes. We'll appreciate the repaved road later. Okay, so this is all pressed down and planted. I'm going to put a plant tag in here so I remember what I planted. And then also remember how I said to put some fertilizer onto the soil surface. So I'm going to use this bulb and bloom food because it's open. <laughs> That's always a good reason. And just, just a little bit of fertilizer. And that's it. So you can see the planting is simple. It's a matter of deciding where you want to plant things, what height they are, what depth they need to be, and so on. Planting spring bulbs is so worth your time. They add a lot of beauty and interest to your landscape, and it's something that you can look forward to after a long, cold winter. That's everything for today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening.